Hello, the Lord bless you. Welcome to Kingdom Upgrades YouTube channel. I am your ambassador, Dylan. Like and subscribe to this channel to hear and know more of our content. If you're new here, feel free to press the subscription button and the notification bell there on your right hand corner to hear and know more of our content and for the regulars you welcome the lord bless you all let's jump into this content we're looking at put on the new self and we're in colossians chapter 3 i'm going to read from verse 1 through to 10. so let's go here i'm reading from verse 1 therefore if you have been raised with christ Keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above, not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal values. Come on. For you died and your new life is hidden with Christ in God. <laughs> Verse 4, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So put to death and deprive of power the evil longings of your earthly body with its sensual, self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desires, and greed which is a kind of idolatry it is idolatry okay because of these sinful things the divine rot you hear the divine rot of god is coming on the sons of disobedience and in these sinful things you also once walk when you were habitually living in them without the knowledge of Christ. But now rid yourselves completely of all these things, anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene, abusive, filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the whole self with its evil practice and have put on the new spiritual self who is being continually renewed in the true knowledge in the image of him who created the new self. Okay, let's look at this. I want to take it from, and then I'm going to go back from verse 1. Let, let's look at verse 5. The word of God gave us directions as well as directives. And it speaks to us in a figurative sense. And we have to pay close attention. Verse 5 is saying, So put to death and deprive of power the evil longings of your earthly body with its sensual self-centered instincts immorality impurity sinful passion evil desires and greed which is idolatry my god because they replace our devotion to god it takes the place of our devotion to god when you become idolatrous it takes your focus and your attention when you focus and spend more time on things that are not of god it causes you to focus your attention and it takes away your devotion okay to god so you would spend less time with god and more time with the things that you find pleasure in that you idolize okay and those things are sensual self-centered okay and when our self-centered instinct is alive as a result of our immorality, impurity, and sinful passion, evil desires, and greed, and it's, it clusters and clogs us, our spirit man. So we are so self-centered, our instinct is selfish. We cannot sense and relate spiritually with God because that clogs us up literally. Idolatry. God hates idolatry. He said, the first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. Come on. 
So we have to pay attention to the first and the second commandment. Okay? Because on those two hang all the others. Come on. Verse 6. Because of these sinful things, the divine wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience. So you hear what? Why the divine wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience? Yes, you're a son, but you're a disobedient son. Okay, or you're a disobedient daughter. So the wrath of God is going to come. Why? God's word is already set in judgment and in blessing. Come on. He do not compromise. His word will not return void, but it will accomplish what it was sent forth for. As he pleases. As the word please, it will come forth. Because it's, a, it's the law of sowing and reaping. Okay? So the word will produce. So if you're a disobedient son or daughter, come on. Those who fail to listen and who routinely, routinely and abstainly disregard God's precepts. Come on. God's word already went forth and it's settled. So we're the one who have ones who have to find ourselves in the right place, in the correct posture. That will determine what happens, okay, for us. And in these sinful things, verse seven, in these sinful things, you are you also once walk when you were habitually living in them. Okay, I'm gonna go now to the from verse one. So verse 7 here is telling us, we walk in these things when we were habitually living in them. It is saying to us here that before we came to Christ, okay, that is, we practice, we habitually walk in disobedience, okay, and we continue to do what was evil. But now you come to Christ, you're supposed to change, you're supposed to Make a decision. Be intentional about change. Repentance. True repentance. Repentance simply means not just asking God to forgive you, but to have a change of your inner self. Change your inner self. That is what is repentance. To have a change of heart. Okay? So you don't do this all by yourself. All you have to do is desire. Come on. You don't have the ability to change yourself. Okay? It is still not by might, it's not by power, but it is by my spirit, say the Lord of hosts. So it's a work of the spirit of God. So willing and obedience is important. Being willing and obedient. So these are the two words we have to look at. Being willing and obedient. So you're willing, you desire change. You came to Christ and you desire change. And you're willing to change, right? And you begin to walk in obedience to the word of God. Because we first know and experience God through his word is written word because jesus is the living word and the bible is the written word so through the word of god we become willing to obey what we hear come on that's what the word of god said be not only doers but we do not only be hearers only but doers also so we are willing to obey what we heard come on and we move in obedience by faith that is what brings the transformation come on mighty god okay so as you walk in obedience you will be transformed so verse 7 is saying to us and in these sinful things you also once walk when you were habitually living in them my god that was without the knowledge of christ so as you come into the contact with the knowledge of christ you have to be willing to obey come on willing to obey it is your willingness to obey that makes a difference. It is how intentional you are. Come on. You can't change yourself, but God looks at, at the intent of the heart and the desire. And that's what he works with. So when you are outside of the knowledge of God, you are in ignorance. You habitually walk and live in a particular way. But now you come to the knowledge of God. You have to be willing to obey. Come, come on. Okay, so let's look here at verse 1. <clears throat> it said here to us, Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, okay, to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking 
the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So the word of God is saying here, when we accepted Christ as savior, God raised us up and gave us a seat to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Come on. That is already done. It's in the realm of the spirit. It's done. It's a work of Christ that is done by faith. It's a mystery. It's already done. What brings that into manifestation? It is you and I faith to believe the word and walk in obedience. Come on. It's already done because it said here to a new life sharing in his resurrection power from the dead. So what is saying you have this earthen, this treasure in earthen vessel. So you have resurrection power on the inside of you, but it's dormant. What will bring resurrection power alive is your obedience and in your faith to walk out in obedience. Okay. So your willingness to walk by faith and obey the word of God will cause resurrection power to come alive because it's dormant. It's going to come alive. It's going to be awakened because there is an unveiling. Come on. Okay. So you have to keep seeking the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father. It don't mean that you are so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. It is saying keep your mind stayed on Christ. Romans 12, 1 and 2 speaks of presenting your body and having your mind transformed. Okay. And be renewed. So the reality is as your mind, as you obey and keep your mind on Christ and obey the word of God, it has the ability and the connotation to bring transformation and renewal of mind because your mind is renewed by the word of God. As you read the word of God, you meditate on the word of God. It transformed your mind. Okay. And it brings transformation as a result of your obedience and in so doing it reveals okay resurrection power you are being revealed you're being unveiled come on so verse 2 so set your mind and keep focus habitually on the things above the heavenly things not only on things that are on the earth which have only temporal value Note, it is your faith and your ability to believe that will bring that mystery into manifestation. Come on. It is your ability and your faith. Your faith and ability to believe and obey the word of God will bring that mystery of your heavenly seated position into manifestation. Come on. And because we are living in a Kairos moment, it is a prophetic moment that is considered heaven, heavenly, whereby everything is accelerating and manifesting at a faster rate because of eternity, the time we are living in, a moment and time that God has set aside for his manifestation and purpose divine manifestation and purpose so we are in eternity that is considered prophetic moment because christ is prophetic he is an essence of prophecy okay he's a spirit of prophecy so we're living in this time that everything will be just unveiling so that's why we have to be correctly postured find yourselves in the right place okay my god verse three hear what verse three has to say here here to us for you died to this world when you accepted christ you died to this world your water baptism going under the water and coming up is symbolic of your death and resurrection so you died you went through the practice okay you died and you raised a new life you're also raised and seated with christ in heavenly place so what brings that into manifestation is your obedience and your ability to believe and trust and have faith in the word of God. The word of God has the ability, the credibility to bring into manifestation the message it bear. Come on. The word of God has the credibility to bring into manifestation the message it bears. So, 
verse 3 said, For you died to this world, and your new life is hidden with Christ in God. It's wrapped up, it's locked up. So it's an unveiling of your new life as you obey and walk in obedience. So when, verse 4 said, when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. No, this is with reference to his second coming. So if you're obeying and when you're obeying Christ while obeying and walking in obedience, walking in obedience by faith, right? You're being unveiled gradually because your new life is coming to fruition. It's coming into manifestation. It's coming to reality. It's coming alive and becoming evidence. Why evident? Because you're obeying and you're walking in obedience. So what is hidden is going to be revealed gradually. It's not done. It's not done suddenly. It is done. It is done progressively. Come on. It is done progressively. Come on. So because resurrection power, this treasure in earthen vessel is there dormant. So it has to come alive. So there is an unveiling of your new life in Christ Jesus. So that when Christ, come on, who is your new life appears, you will also appear with him in glory. Because you've been walking with him all the time. And there comes a point in a time where... He will appear in his glory, in glory, and you will also appear with him. So you will be able to reign in glory with him because he is present and his presence is present. Come on. His presence is present and you will reign in his presence because you are walking with him all the time. Come on. So in, an, in his appearance, you're there in his presence. Come on. So this is with reference to his second coming. Mighty God. So the word of God said to us, so put to death. I did that before. So that is the reality. When you put to death and deprive of power the evil longings of the earthly body with its sensual self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sensual passions, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Listen to me. You will be able to pick up in God gradually. It's a progressive work in sanctification. And you're being drawn nigh to God. That's what the word of God says. Resist the, draw, resist the devil. Draw nigh to God. And he will flee. So as you resist where there is no opposition, where you're not putting up resistance and opposition, come on, to the kingdom of darkness and the powers of darkness, my God, that might be a ring against your life and coming against your life, that is passivity. That is considered passivity. It's like you're relaxing and allowing what to be to be. So the word of God says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So what is saying? It's a wrestling match. You got to be fighting. You got to be wrestling. You got to constantly be putting up opposition. The adversary like when we are passive. Passivity is carnality. You have to be intentional. Come on, intentional. So when you were outside of Christ, before you came to him, you practice and habitually walk in sin and evil ways. So now you come to Christ, you have to practice and habitually set your mind on him him come on that's a parallel you have to habitually now set your mind on him you have to be steadfast you have to be intentional you, it must be a deliberate god is intentional about you come on so you must be intentional about him and what concerns him he is intentional about your life because your life has purpose and he intended it to be my god okay god is faithful and verse 10 and sorry let me read verse 9 do not lie to one another for you have stripped off the old self with its evil practice and have put on the new spiritual self who is being con 
continually renewed in true knowledge in the image of him who created the new life. So you're constantly and continually being renewed in true knowledge. That is in the image of him who created the new life. So when you continually walk in the renewed and in the knowledge of him who created you and created a new life, your mind, your image, you're being transformed. Okay? So you're taking on the image of him who created the new life. Come on. Mighty God. Father, we thank you for this time. I thank you. I trust the Lord that you were blessed and encouraged. Lord, we thank you. I pray your kingdom come. I pray your will be done on earth in earthen vessels at this time. God, manifest yourself, God. Bring wisdom, bring knowledge and understanding as a result of your word, God. So we thank you. We give you praise and we give you thanks for what you are doing and what you will continue to do in this season, in this time in our lives, individually and collectively. In Christ's name. Shalom. The Lord bless you. Love you. Take care.